So, hi, here's Overball. We finished shooting uh, Rampage, the last part of the trilogy, in uh, uh, first in Jamestown in Langley, um, outside in the in the forest. We had a few big days. Uh, you maybe saw online some stuff already with 40, 50 uh, uh, stun people and uh, 40, 50 explosions. So we go out big on, on Rampage. It was, uh, in a way, very sad. Uh, to do basically right now my last movie as a director and to finish the trilogy at the same time and uh, it's kind of my boyhood you know like I mean we follow for over 10 11 years the terrorist and killer Bill Williamson but we also kind of like him yeah and then we shot in the <coughs> Maple Ridge Studios um, FBI office TV studio uh, private apartments we built there the crew was very good, very motivated because we shot right away uh, in the beginning of the new year. So nobody else was shooting so early. We started basically New Year's Day. And uh, so you get all the equipment cheaper, you get the crew cheaper and you get good crew and everything that was uh, very, very important and good. Um, so uh, I think we all enjoyed it. Matthias Neumann came over, my camera guy from Germany. Also maybe my last col uh, collaboration with him, Jessica Doi will make the music. Jonathan Shaw post-production, Calvin uh, doing the editing. So we're all a very uh, happy crew. Now it's maybe two or three more months for editing and putting the music on. And then in summer, I want to do in Germany uh, a theatrical tour going from city to city. In US, I would do the same. But uh, in US, movie theaters uh, want money if you want to play your movies there. And that is ridiculous. Uh, in Germany, it's like they play my movies and I get 50% of the box office. Uh, if my fans or whoever listen to that can get movie theaters playing us under that conditions, I would travel to be there and I would do a US theatrical tour for the movie too. But uh, of course, I hope also for film festivals, uh, inviting maybe uh, the movie and getting all three uh, Rampage movies played. Uh, in one night or something, you know, Montreal, Texas, Alamo Fest, whatever, San Francisco. A lot of festivals I was in the last 10, 15 years. They maybe want to invite me now again because I stopped uh, shooting and I'm not uh, making movies uh, anymore. I will still co-produce movies or whatever. We sell the King Cobra movie with James Franco where I provide financing and I do world sales. But for me, the end is here and not only for Bill Williamson. Uh, because as I said before, the market is absolutely in the toilet. You're not getting properly paid as a filmmaker. Piracy destroyed the world. And at the same time, you know, like if you have illegal piracy on the new Star Wars, they still do two, two and a half billion bucks on the movie. But if you have a five million dollar movie, one million dollar movie, that kind of independent movies now are dead because the DVD market is dead and the VOD market doesn't pay. All that Hulu's, Amazon's, Google's, Netflix, whatever, pay pennies on the dollar with that money. Only film students can make movies, but nobody else. And based on the VOD and watching everything online, what happened is that Showtime, Super Channel, Movie Central, DirecTV, all that outlets you have for pay TV or cable uh, are paying less and less for movies because the competition destroys them. So it's a downward spiral, as Bill Williamson said in uh, Rampage 1. A downward spiral to the end and that end right now is there so but the shoot was very uh, interesting because I shot again only with the treatment and I forced the actors uh, to slip in their characters uh, before already in December to uh, to be FBI agents to be like and so the process is totally different as to shoot an, uh, a CSI episode or something where you learn a line and you say it here it was like okay so we have only bullets as forensic evidence. What would you de then? Like, so I force the actors to turn into FBI agents as an example. And then they have to, of course, analyze like, okay, what I would actually do? Where is that bullet from? What weapon? Who owns that weapon? Where are the people that own that weapon? Uh, what illegal weapons maybe get sold? So, you know, like stuff like this from where, where was the shooter? Is it a mile away? 500 meters away, 200 meters away. So, you know, like, so you build your case around what you have. You have the victim who got shot, you have the bullet, you don't have anything else. So what is with video footage? Like, is there any video footage we can pull out of parking lots, etc., etc., to find maybe a video image 
of the shooter or of people with a duffel bag where a gun could be and a rifle could be. Stuff like this. And it turned out very good. So I talked them through the whole process. We had like in the FBI office some takes. They were 18 minutes long. We never stopped. And uh, I think that was a very uh, clever a uh, clever way to shoot it again this way it's it's a it's more interesting but b it's also of course it's it's exhausting because as a director also i have to be there bam 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 you know i cannot just sit there and watch something something happening and and uh, say oh yeah mm. so i never look at my treatment when i shoot and i have to move in my head and then it's 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 really like walking everybody uh, through the scenes and throwing things in, you know, when they stuck, whatever, I throw in, like, okay, so why uh, uh, your superiors don't want to support you? And uh, um, that is how we move forward with, with Rampage 3, now focusing on the post-production. Verständnis. So muss das aussehen, du Trottel! Scheiße. Ja. Liebe und Fürsorge. Ich, auch, ich kann mich doch wohl auch noch alleine ausziehen. Ja, komm, hier, hier, hier. Sind die Eckpfeiler einer glücklichen Jugend. Ah, Hammer! Ich hab gehört, du bist gefeuert worden! Doch irgendwann ist es Zeit, seinen lieben Lebewohl zu sagen. Es eröffnen sich ungeahnte Möglichkeiten. Du bekommst von mir 150.000 Mark. Und diverse Schwierigkeiten. Erstens musst du bis zum Ende des ersten Semesters zwei Prüfungen bestehen. Das mache ich doch mit links. Das kann ja wohl nicht wahr sein. Durchgefallen. Mhm. Zweitens hast du bis zum Ende des Semesters eine feste Freundin. Was machst du eigentlich nur am nächsten Tag? 15.06 Uhr. Hi, Lea. Hallo, Andreas. Und? Schon eingelebt. Wunderbar. Ich habe ein super Zimmer. Nette Vermieterin. Gut, dass ich sie treffe. Das war schon lange fällig. Wieso? Kurtaxe. Und total nette Mitbewohner. Sehen Sie in einer deutschen Komödie über Chancen und ihre Nebenwirkungen Christian Kamann. Ich glaube, ich muss mal aufs Klo. Jutta Lorenz. Bin ich so blöd oder was? Und Rados Buckel. Aber das ist noch nicht alles. In das erste Semester. Ein Film von Uwe Boll. Demnächst im Kino. Wo intelligente Männer doch so selten sind. So, yes, Uwe Boll, uh, with a quick thing. So, yes, I had a day, basically, a little time. So, I went in The Revenant uh, with DiCaprio. And what I want to say is good things and bad things. So, the camera, I really like the camera. I really like Leonardo DiCaprio. It's very good. I like overall this kind of movies, revenge stories. And so on, but that is also one of the weaknesses. It's a simple revenge story, not more. So the movie, under no circumstances, should get the Oscar as best movie of the year. They should better give it to like the big short or movies with more substantial, good story. The dialogue overall, I felt like Tom Hardy tries to copy Tommy Lee Jones, but Tom Hardy is like from Liverpool or something. So why he didn't have an English accent? as an immigrant coming from uh, England, then, then we would A, understand him better, and B, he would be more believable as a character. Even if Brandon Fletcher, my friend and lead actor from Rampage, has a big part, he had 80 shooting days, but then you see him saying five lines in the whole movie, and they could totally shoot him out within uh, five days, basically. That that whole movie was shot in 140 days because in a Ritu, wanted to shoot at all that magic hour every day from four o'clock in the afternoon till six o'clock or seven o'clock in the night is total bullshit and i feel like a lot of the actors are wooden they are not believable uh the the, the caucasians the indian actors i think the natives were all actually very good the blood effects are very good the bear attack is absolutely amazing but that brings the other problem of the movie it's totally unrealistic nobody would survive that bear attack and if you would survive it in the first thing, you are dead the next day, especially under these circumstances. You will get a wooden, wound infection, you would die. I mean, there is no fucking way that he would survive that, even if he watches his own son dying, you know. So, um, totally unrealistic. You would also like, when you go in ice cold water and you get flooded away, when the 
natives almost got him and then uh, 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 he's flooding away basically he would never survive that too also why his powder is would be still uh, not wet and where you can still make a fire and, and dry off or something you know you would never really dry off on a small campfire like this under uh, uh, conditions uh, like this you know it's uh, it's just absurd basically and also like a lot of scenes were like shot in the middle of the night so I don't know that was definitely not the, the magic hour and some scenes also looked like shot at bright daylight so I think that whole idea what they published in the press that it was so hard to do an inner read it was so complicated you wanted to do it only a magic hour when you see the finished movie you think why is it just didn't shot the whole day and we're done 70 million dollars less and 80 shooting days less as they were. So I think from a director perspective, he fucked a lot of things up and that it was unnecessarily because the result is like not so good. To be honest, I didn't also like really Birdman. I think the total joke that I'm not, the thing about Birdman won an Oscar for best movie, but the year before Wolf of Wall Street not. I mean, where the fuck we're living? There are like worlds in between these two movies. And um, so I totally, I, I, I totally, to be honest, don't get that. Uh, but as I said before, I overall like that kind of movies, you know, I prefer to watch that movies 24 hours a day in comparison to watching superhero movies or Star Wars or something like this, you know, but overall I think uh, uh, the movie is too long also and it's uh, very much stre stretched out, unnecessarily stretched out so long also, like half, you can cut in half an hour out without uh, missing in any way any uh, any point you know I mean that is basically my five cents to maybe even the Oscars but DiCaprio deserved it for a lot of movies and Wolf of Wall Street specifically to get the Oscars best actor so now uh, they should give it to him for The Revenant because he carries the movie and he is doing an amazing job like amazing and uh, that alone is worth it to, to watch the movie and it's far away of being a shitty movie but it's also like not like flawless or something also when he the first opening scene where he is going on hunting with his son you know the whole like the deer there the elk or whatever it is looks total fake CGI you know so and of course they faked a lot of course DiCaprio was not really flooding down the river they did face replacements with the bear it was never him and the bear I know that bear by the way, you remember I uh, selling the movie Backcountry. So it's the same uh, bear and uh, you cannot have an actor with that bear. He actually kills you. And uh, I think also his wounds looked like prosthetics. Uh, it doesn't really, they didn't really look realistically. They looked a little fake. And um, what a surprise for me because the makeup was very good, you know. So the, the wardrobe was very good. So the Revenant should get a few more Oscars on that smaller uh, sections you know but especially his wounds his back and everything looked all that rubber like all like prosthetics kind of strange that it is that way and um, to be honest the Oscars every day every year getting less and less important and have less and less power to the box office because most of the movies are already screened and done uh, and, and not like boosting back up when you get the Oscar you know so I mean if, if Reverend gets the Oscar, they maybe make $5 million more box office worldwide. Makes $2.5 million uh, total more return on the movie. Okay, and yesterday I watched the first cut of Rampage uh, 3 with the editor. I went through everything. I get my dog in here. And uh, so... Okay. Uh, and we have a still... As always with Rampage, is a lot of things coming together in the editing room. A lot of work has to be done in the editing room very complicated with you know the footage the news footage that his youtube messages the action the, and we don't st tell the story always straight right it goes back and forth and back and forth and this time we had to bring things uh up to date also um in regards of the other two parts because it's the last part of course and uh, it's all uh not so easy you know, so uh, to now finish everything together, what we always uh, tried with the with the Rampage uh, trilogy. So it's a sad ending for everybody. Our boyhood, basically, we follow Bill Williamson for ten years, and uh, 
But as I said, there's a lot of work to do before September. The movie will be not out anywhere uh, because it uh, takes a while. A child who spends 13 years in average public schools has one chance in roughly 107,000 of a violent death in school, on school property, or while commuting to school. The whiny, skinny fucks. <laughs> Can't throw a ball. What's this? Tapping away on your little computers. <laughs> Just learning. <laughs> Man, I never did nothing too bad to nobody. <laughs> we really left our mark here, didn't we? Fuck out of here, you little faggot. That's 12 years of beatings and degrading bullshit. See, this is what happens when you go there. <gasps> this crap's been going on since the first fucking grade. I need some meth you're holding. What are you holding? A 50. You want to smoke it, snort it, swallow it? Well, it'll affect me faster. Do you know what this shit is doing to my school? You're a fucking guidance counselor. All right, you're not the mayor of Happy Town here. This is a high school, Will, not Starbucks. Yeah, I know. Starbucks pays better. <laughs> you're here. Everyone else has a normal kid. <laughs> Me, I got fucking Dark Lord. Look at him. No! Yeah. Oh. oh my god, what the hell happened to you? Just leave me alone. What the hell happened to you? Oh! Go down, go down! I fucking mean it. I'm really sick of this. What are all those red marks on your face, son? Hickeys? I'm stronger than you think. What? I'm sorry, sorry. What? I'm sorry. You sorry? Just fuck off! Leave me alone! Bitch. Has high school taught you anything except how much this world blows? Life does suck, and then you do die. It's what you do before then that matters, what mark you left. And since I could give a fuck whether or not I live or die, that's the only thing that I care about. Today's your last day. You give us some extra hell today. Because tomorrow, these little fucks are going to be the people you wish you were. What are you thinking? Last day of school, first bell before home. You're not gonna punk out on me, are you? I'm sorry, I really wanted to help take care of this for you, though. It's okay, I can take care of it on my own. Take whatever you want everyone else does. I don't want those motherfuckers to know what they've done to me. Uh, uh, Who are you gonna be? You know what happens when you kick a dog one too many times? Who are you gonna be? Uh, huh? They bite. <laughs> My kids don't have to go through what we did. So, here's Uwe Boll. Uh, yeah, today I read two very interesting uh, articles. The one is from Chris Hatches in A Nation of Change, uh, uh, and it's on, um, uh, on the website uh, of it. I posted it also on my Facebook, The Marriage of Justice, and I think he what I did in Rampage 2 uh, totally nailed it, right? So I, I copied out. The reality is that almost no one who is imprisoned in America has gotten a trial. There's a rarely an impartial investigation. A staggering 97% of all federal cases and 95% of all state felony cases are resolved through plea bargains. Of the 2.2 million people we have incarcerated at the moment, 25% of the world's prison population, 2 million never had a trial. And significant, significant percentages of them are innocent. I mean, think about that. <laughs> it is, I mean, I'm sitting here with my coffee or cake, and you think like, oh my fucking God. Like, what is going on? You know, it's like when we wake up and that fits with uh, that he basically said the poor have um, have no trial, no rights. Like they, they're all poor who, who do the who do the play bargains, right? So, and I mean, and that is the thing what is absolutely unbelievable and Everybody, in a way, in U.S. accepted um, the, the situation, land of the free or whatever, that, that it's all the land of the rich. And uh, 
if you don't if you're not rich you're fucked you will get zero rights and zero health care zero protection and you're just a piece of shit who gets like moved around you know and last weekend I watched Bill Mayer and I really like Bill Mayer you know he made a good point also why Obama never got in his show but there was also John Krasinski whatever about the 13 hours Michael Bay movie and Bill Mayer and everybody was so eager to say and John Krasinski, Krasinski the actor too we need to support our troops blah 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 but at the same time Bill Mayer says always um, why are we going into senseless wars, you know? And I think that is the ridiculous thing. It's It doesn't make any sense what, what, what we're actually doing. Like, you cannot protect the army and always, like, kiss the ass of the army uh, if you question the existence of the army in the first place. And, I mean, and that is the thing what is uh, completely uh, off track also with liberals and left wings like Bill Mayer. You know that they all have to. They all have still the thinking. America has to be the the most, uh, the biggest uh, weapon machine, military machine in the in the world. Ten times more spent as any other uh, military. If if it's China or Russia uh, on Earth, so the spending is completely out of control. And to say like we have to support the troops. I mean, if you send soldiers in a different uh, country and they are they are fighting or whatever, of course you have to support them. And I'm, I'm not against this, but you should not even have that war. You should not even send them there. So from this point of view, that whole uh, absurd shit is totally pissing me off. And that he promotes a Michael Bay movie, who is nothing else as a tool of the American military uh, apparatchiks, basically, is uh, for me... Uh, a little downfall what I had uh, in, in regards of, of Bill Mayer. But the third thing today is even more important because Stephen Hawkins, we all know him, said he sees we extinct ourselves. It's basically also what Bill Williamson and Rampart said, what I said since 10 years. Um, he said we have to look out for different planets where we can live because of the percentual chance that we destroy the planet uh, is going every year higher and so that idea that we are maybe the last generation is not so far off and you know when you think about then movies like Mad Max or whatever it gets more and more realistic that in the end we're all turning back to barbarians fighting with weapons about the last resources and then more and more realistic are movies like Interstellar where they gave up the earth you know but I don't want to give up the earth I don't want to turn it around here on earth you know and it, it's basically if Bernie Sanders doesn't get elected and it's said a Republican or whatever then it's time for a revolution you know? it's like we have to turn the power over to the people with common sense and the brain I mean we cannot just I mean think about it we just give it up and we're all in space. Our kids are in spaceships flying somewhere else to try to live. That like the biggest, one of the biggest scientists, scientists on the planet just said that. Do we really want to do this? Or we want to fucking cut the climate change and do major reforms like no nuclear wars possible, climate change stop, no fucking idiotic wars anymore, no more uh, uh, fight about the oil or whatever turning to alternative energies. I mean, that is what I really want. And, and uh, I, I think with me, the majority. So, we're living in a bala bala world, in the world of the crazy people. It doesn't make any sense. Uh, and that three things today I wanted to share with you. Thanks. The sudden reversal in weather systems, which began six months ago, continues to wreak havoc around the globe. Thousands of communities isolated by washed out highways. Many roads have disappeared altogether. I can't get any of the neighbors on the phone. There's a man out in the field. Who is he? What's your name? Uh, call. Is there anything else you can remember? 
I was afraid. Is it empty? Hello? Where is everybody? They're all going. And what the hell are you talking about? Something terrible has happened. Are you saying that's like this everywhere? Your heart is looking for answers, but your pride refuses to seek them. I suggest you start right here. And the moon became his blood, and the stars of heaven fell onto the earth. He's crazy, you know that, right? What's gonna happen? Is the world gonna end? Is it all gonna blow up? You know something new really went on. How would the world end? Fireworks, big explosion. It's not gonna be like that at all. yesterday the judge was robert downey jr not a bad movie I, I have to say you know predictable but not not so bad the oscars uh the whole thing was that the black actors are boycotting the oscars uh i mean look you can throw two things back one is okay but for what they should be nominated because nobody wasn't anything what was really good. I mean, Will Smith in Concussion, another hero story. And he even said it. He always wants to play the heroes, whatever. And it's like not the biggest thing because it's like obvious that a lot of football players have concussions and that it's a big problem and that they're taking painkillers, medication and steroids, blah, blah, blah. So that movie is 25 years too late. It's like, it's not controversial. Who gives a fuck about it? And, and so that is it. Then the next thing is, uh, you know, they say already on defense, like mediocre actors like Jada Pinkett Smith, she already on her own defense says, oh, yeah, but we're not getting the good, uh, the good offers. There are not a lot of parts for black people uh, in movies. I don't know if that is true. Maybe, maybe it is even true, but uh, uh, it is also like, to be honest, like, you don't have to be always claiming racism if somebody sucks or somebody's just wrong for the part. And that, you know, that is what it is. I mean, uh, what is if the white people would turn around and would say, what is in the music industry? I mean, you have tons of black people, they're the biggest hits, uh, hit makers on the planet uh, yeah, from Jay-Z, Kanye West, Beyonce, Rihanna, whatever. Nobody cares. They, 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 they would never say, oh, it's racism. No, they're getting played over and over and over in the radio. The, the concerts are, are sold out because they bring something to the plate what the people want. And so, and that is kind of, uh, I think it's kind of a cheap uh, bullshit excuse. You know, Spike Lee's movie also shouldn't be nominated because it's not great as uh, most of the Spike Lee movies, to be honest, I think Spike Lee is a good filmmaker, but he never really made any great movie on anything. Even uh, uh, Malcolm X was okay, but not great. And uh, um, so that, that, is, that is in general uh, a thing, but it is what it is. Then I followed up the presidential campaigns this week. I mean, you saw the video on YouTube with uh, Donald Trump, that three girls singing in front of his, uh, <laughs> His uh, thing, and I mean the poor girls, you know. Cowardice. Are you serious? Apologies for freedom. I can't handle this. When freedom brings answer the call on your feet, stand up tall. Freedom's on our shoulders. USA, enemies of freedom. Face the music. Come on, boys, take them down. They will get hold accountable for that bullshit they are singing for the rest of their lives. And it's just like when you really see the elections and the, the substantial things they're putting out. Um, I watched the TV commercials of everybody and I have to say from the Republicans, Jeb Bush makes the best impression to me that uh, he is not a, a loose cannon. He is, uh, he grew up with, in a power family, power position, and he's, I think, aware of the responsibility he has if he would be president. So for the worldwide damage for uh, America uh, after the next election, if a Republican wins, 
it should be uh, 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 Jeb Bush, you know, or second would be Rand Paul, uh, as like, okay, they're not totally lunatics and they get the shit together when they're actually in power. You know, the other people are big security risks and um, third world war risk and all kinds of stuff. So it's, it's crazy, you know. And uh, I just watched a, a doku from the Russian TV, 90 minutes, and they had like tons of Putin interviews in. But it's interesting to see it from the other perspective. Right? Putin, for example, said after Russia lost in Afghanistan over 30 years ago the war, they never did a war again because it doesn't make any sense. And, uh, uh, and America, I said, goes from one step mistake to the next one. Uh, uh, in a way, America never won a war uh, after the Vietnam War, and including the Vietnam War, and they still keep doing it. So we all assume it's paid by the weapon industry that they keep doing it, even if it doesn't make any sense, and it doesn't solve problems. And that's what Putin also said, and I'm absolutely pro-Putin. They said the whole Arab Spring was completely bullshit, and it destabilized the whole Middle East, and now we have an absolutely mess, and you totally don't, don't know why... America and Western Europe wants to remove Assad as the last dictator in the Middle East, uh, uh, the boss of Syria, you know, and because he at least you can talk to, he's stable, he's not a, a religious lunatic, and Putin holds to him because his replacement would be not ending up in democracy and everybody goes to make drive. No, it ends up as it ended up in all the other countries in absolutely chaos and religious fundamentalist idiots take over. And uh, so that it, 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 and Putin is absolutely right with that. And uh, I think sometimes this kind of stuff should be shown more in the media. Also CNN should show it and stuff like this to just like open the mind from the other perspective. And I think that 80% of the people with common sense would totally agree there uh, with, with Putin, you know. I mean, uh, I really hope that Bernie Sanders uh, gets elected for the Democrats and, and that he turns into the president because uh, after eight years of Obama doing good stuff, good, okay stuff, I think it's now time to massively uh, change, you know, to massively uh, uh, turn, the, turn the, the world around. And I think Bernie Sanders, what he says about... Uh, like going against Wall Street, going against the 0.1%, going against the weapon industry, going against uh, military uh, actions around the globe and stuff like this is the only way we uh, we can beat the time, you know, the, the time it's running up that we're going down the drain. And I think uh, um, that could help to stop the downfall of the uh, civilization we are basically in. You know, and it sounds always funny, don't for blah, 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 because our life never changes. My life also doesn't change. But the reality is that the natural science facts are not lying. And so we have to be aware that we have too much trouble on the planet with military action right now, too many civil wars and uh, terrorist danger. And at the same time, we have uh, the climate change not stopping. So... And uh, yeah, that, that is it for today. I'm very excited that tomorrow the soccer season in Germany starts again after the winter break. So, okie dokie. Talk to you later. None of that shit matters. Where you been? Where you from? Right now, you in Vietnam. Ain't Buckingham Palace, but it looks like something, doesn't it? <coughs> My mom would kill me if she saw me doing this. This place is all about survival. If you look in the Bible, Joshua is ordered to slay every man, woman, child, cattle, and slave of his enemy. We open our first tunnel tomorrow. We found this tunnel yesterday, just before sundown. Volunteers. Got it, sir. You got it. I'll go first. Five bucks for a dead goat. There's nothing down here. Joe, look at Oh, my God! I'm a fucking...
fucking died out here, man. I'm gonna fucking die this fucking hole. Like for fun, uh, I compare a little North America uh, with Germany. And uh, so first the plus point for North America, I think the people overall are more friendly to anybody, to foreigners and, and uh, uh, like, you know, like more open hearted when you actually go in direct contact to the people in North America and Canada, US is there very similar. They are not like, uh, full of negativity as a lot of Germans basically they if you live in Germany in Nuremberg and so on they block you away and uh, you go in a bar you talk to somebody and they say like did they look like I want to talk to you so uh, it's uh, it's harder to get in contact to people in uh, in Germany as in, in North America and they're also not so helpful what is kind of funny because when you think now for example about the Syrian refugees Germany took over a million and North America took not even 50,000 uh, uh, so it looks like Germany is way more open to foreign people, but it's not. And if you see with the Syrian refugees also, like the reactions, uh, there were over a thousand attacks on refugee homes already since the Syrian refugees came in. So uh, like Molotov cocktails, stones through the window, stuff like this, over a thousand. So to think Germany is so friendly and welcoming to migrants is a, a big, big mistake. But the politics make the decision to bring the migrants in. But giving Germany here a few plus points, as an example, look at, at a German newspaper this week here, and there's an ad in for wine, you know, and you get like uh, six bottles of red wines uh, with 91 Parker points uh, for like 50 euro, all six bottles together. In North America, that same bottle would cost at least 150 bucks. Uh, a liter of like organic milk here in Canada cost easy 250 in Germany 90 cents um, like a lot of things are in Germany way cheaper like good food look organic food it's not so Monsanto driven uh, there so you get excellent vegetables and also organic meat way cheaper as you get it here in uh, um, in North America what is of course with my restaurant for example with Bauhaus that is like not easy to get uh, ex actually uh, the stuff uh, uh, cheap, you know, che or cheap enough to sell it cheap enough in the restaurant. So uh, that is the same. But but overall, it's it's like crazy here. A piece of cheese like Comte cheese here on the uh, uh, on the cheese stand in the market is like fifteen to twenty dollars in Germany. It would be five to six bucks. Cheese Parmesan cheese, a big chunk, costs here at least fifty bucks in Germany. You would pay like fifteen. So. Uh, food wise Germany way cheaper next thing universities schools like top schools top universities basically 99% is public in Germany and they're all basically free I think as a student you pay hundred dollars a semester uh, as, a, as a student fee so uh, and the schools and, and uh, universities are uh, same quality as here in North America the private schools but they are free uh, what is very good and if you follow the election stuff Bernie Sanders said it should be free and he, I think he's dead on his right and the next thing is like medical costs you know like heavy heavy medical costs uh, here like x-rays cost like two three hundred dollars an, an x-ray or you do an MRI CT whatever you pay thousands of dollars an x-ray in Germany is 80 bucks an MRI or CT is 300 400 bucks max so uh, the uh, and the clinics when you go here in a walk-in clinic or you go here to St. Paul's in Vancouver for example it's like packed with people you wait for hours even if you have a heart attack so it's uh, it's a very bad medical system in North America only if you're really really rich and you go to the elite doctors private clinic doctor uh, you get good treatment in Germany um, all the clinics are open uh, for everybody but we have enough doctors enough clinics the prices are reasonable but it's all really clean and somebody takes care of you. We, when we were last year with our newborn baby in Germany and had like breathing problems, so we went to the clinic within five minutes. Uh, he, he, they did everything uh, with him. They did MRI, uh, CT, they did uh, uh, EEG, 
EKG. So, you know, like they did everything to check him out. And my wife was two days with him in the clinic overnight in an individual room. Total bill, 1500 bucks, including all the things they did, blood tests, everything. You know, they sucked blood out of the brain. So they did everything for 1500 bucks. That bill would be, in North America, 30000 plus. And that is the reason. It's like me medical bills in US and in Canada and so can ruin you, basically. And it is in Germany way better covered. And uh, the clinics are way cleaner. And so if I go have an operation in Germany, like I maybe need hip replacement at one point, I would totally do it in Germany. I am still kept my healthcare uh, from Germany. So uh, that in comparisons, you know, and uh, but I give US, for example, or Canada, when I go here in Vancouver, a lot of Teslas driving around. And in Germany, nobody drives electric cars. I mean, it's a very industry car nation in Germany, but the people are just not open for electric cars. I'm extremely pissed about it. Uh, and then here you have a lot of people driving Tesla. So they're more open here, I think, for the climate change and this kind of, uh, yes, we have to actually do something. You know, I mean, in US, maybe you have like 40% of people that completely ignore climate change. They think it's not existing. What is absurd, in Germany, you have 100% of people believing in climate change, but uh, they don't act like this. And here uh, uh, in US, you have at least people driving more Teslas. What you have in Germany more directly, if you, if you uh, see it, is, uh, for example, solar energy panels are almost on every house you drive by. So uh, the whole government uh, changed to wind energy, solar energy, water energy massively after Fukushima and they said like no more nuclear power. Uh, so and they really promote the, 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 the solar energy. I have also panels uh, and solar balls on my house in mines. So that is also there, uh, the, the technology uh, is, is, is way better. So uh, of uh, climate uh, uh, friendly uh, technical solutions um, on stuff, you know. So yeah, uh, that was a little comparison just for fun. Did it move like a vampire? I didn't see her, but from all accounts, it moved like a slow tornado. I've never seen anybody move like you do. That hurt me more than it did you. I'm the damn fear, half human, half vampire. Large, very, very large girl. Very large? Very large. <laughs> Like a caged rhino who hasn't been fed in weeks. Pilates. Mm, ow. I brought snacks! Okay, give me the sandwich. <laughs> Time to kill some nuts. Shadows was a soap opera. Ja, hast du den vollkommen den Verstand verloren? Alles voll in der Scheißzeit und nur über dich. This doesn't make sense. Why don't you pick on someone your own size? And now, a little of my favorites. Chinese female drivers in Vancouver. They should get shot. You remember a postal where you saw the two cops shooting a Chinese woman. That was directly out of my experience here in Vancouver with Chinese drivers. The problem here in Vancouver is 
that a lot of the two lanes streets they don't have a left turn extra uh, 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 kind of lane so when the 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 light uh, so Chinese female driver standing there on an every fucking green light basically they are not like moving into the intersection so you can go behind them and when the light turns red you turn with them no they standing there on the line and not moving in the inter fucking section and sometimes they don't even move in at all ever so it means that you stand there for two green phases at the at the light and you want to go out and smash them into a fucking pulp that retarded fucking bitches you know so if you cannot drive by the way i heard that a few chinese people here they have people that go to the driving test for for them because they look the same so they get not even the fucking driving permit they steal it basically and have people they go and get it for them so it's absolutely ridiculous so but when you're behind them and then they're not moving in the intersection at all so at least you you have two green phases before you can turn you know, that is the thing. It's like driving me absolutely insane. They're the worst drivers existing. And if you think about it, when you have in China now, like that invasion of cars, 25 years ago, there was only bicycles in China. Nobody had a car. Now, there are hundreds of millions of cars. I mean, everybody's happy from the car industry, but a, they're driving the global warming up, what is of course a total disaster, and if China keeps buying more uh, uh, cars, we can do whatever we want, we can drive a Tesla, it doesn't help the uh, uh, global warming anymore, but it's like that kind of like that absolutely stupidity, you know, and they totally don't care about it. That is the other thing, they're totally ob ob oblivious, oblivious uh, on it, so they, they absolutely don't care and uh, have no face, face impression, right? They're sitting behind and you think like, I want to shoot them in the head. I cannot believe it, you know, but it, it's specifically women. You know, and then a lot of women from China here in Vancouver, they have a lot of money, what basically the whole Chinese stole in China and shipped it over to Vancouver, you know? And then you have like, uh, they're sitting there in their Cayenne and Lexus and whatever high up in the station wagons with their five fucking kids, you know, and they're not moving forward. It's absolutely ridiculous. It was even one day, I was, I will never forget, I was on the parking spot at Safeway and a Chinese woman drove over the, that, that, uh, uh, beton thing into the wall of, uh, with a 500 Mercedes, into the wall at, Safe, uh, at Safeway, and then didn't do anything. She was sitting there behind the wheel, was thinking like, what should I do? So she called, maybe her attorney, her husband, whatever. Then she moved backwards over the beton thing again, ruined almost her Mercedes. And the Mercedes was already smashed, and there was a big, like, crack into the house, into the Safeway thing. So she moved backwards and drove away. That was also it's so typical, like, oh, dude, there could be the police, or oh, they have to, I don't want to pay the insurance, blah, 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 whatever, haki chi pakka, and then they go, uh, they're running away. I mean, absolutely ridiculous, and uh, based on my experience, it's uh, absolutely devastating to even watch that. Every single day, I want to kill them, every single day.